Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter 45. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, Judah had gone into captivity for 70 years. And there was to be a deliverer for them. Now, it was Babylon that took southern Judah, well, Jerusalem specifically, the capital, into captivity for 70 years. And then along would come Cyrus, called Cyrus the Great, supposed to be a Persian, and he was to conquer Babylon, and he had a, supposedly a record of good human rights. When he conquered an area, he allowed people to keep their own religion and keep their own, some of their own people in their own government, and he allowed Jerusalem and Judah to go return, rebuild the city that the Babylonians had destroyed, and rebuild the temple. And you can read about that in, well, Isaiah 45. You can read about that in the book of Ezra. You can read about that in the book of Nehemiah. You can read about the Babylonian captivity in the book of Jeremiah. However, in the book of Daniel, it has something about Darius or Darius of Persia conquering Babylon. And when you read a lot of the so-called history accounts, they'll say, oh, well, Darius or Darius is only a literary figure in Daniel who never existed. Therefore, the Bible's wrong. I don't know if Darius or Darius, depending on how you, you know, call it, the, the, Caribbean, Caribbean. But perhaps Darius was a military governor. Perhaps he was a son. Perhaps that was a Aramaic Hebrew name for Cyrus. I don't know. All I know is when I was doing some research, finding out, was it Darius, Darius, or was it Cyrus, I start running into that kind of an argument that, you know, the book of Daniel's wrong, and it was Cyrus, I don't know, but they use the, when you see the dating system, uh, B, C, E, uh, Boy, Charlie, Echo, B-C-E, and C-E, Charlie, Echo. What you're dealing with are antichrists. Yes, you're dealing with antichrists. They claim that B-C-E stands for before the common era, and then they claim C-E stands for common era, as in B-C and AD, which AD stands for Anno Domino. Um, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but uh, basically translates from the Latin into Year of Our Lord. And then BC stands for Before Christ. But uh, as if the birth of Christ was a common era. No. The virgin birth and the guy that gave sight to the blind and heal the sick and raise the dead is not common. Matter of fact, it's the most uncommon thing that ever happened on the face of the earth. So, so like I say, when you see BCE and CE, you're dealing with Antichrist. Just remember that when you're dealing history, you're dealing from somebody that hates Jesus. Period. So, so, but when you read the um, book of Daniel, you'll see Darius Darius, and I don't know the connection 
with Cyrus. They call him Cyrus the Great. I just don't know the connection. And all our history, virtually all our history, has been erased. It's getting to the point you can't even find the truth anymore. The Antichrist have bought up all the publishing companies. They even own the Bible printers. I mean, you know, they're the ones printing these Bible dictionaries. They're the ones printing these concordances and the lexicons. Strong's Concordance was it's been an absolute standard among the Baptists. I had one from the 80s, and then I bought a recent one. They they're changing the words. The one I had in the 80s and the one that I recently bought are not even the same. The definitions are changing. They're different. So keep that in mind. You know, you you just matter of fact, you're better off going to a used bookstore or going to Amazon and buying old used books from the 70s, 80s and 90s. Even the 50s is even better. Uh, so the pages will be yellowed. So what? It's better. So with that in mind, let's read Isaiah chapter 45. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, then the Lord himself anointed Cyrus and held his hand to subdue the nations, including Babylon, who was there to punish Jerusalem for their wickedness for 70 years, people. That's, read the book of Daniel. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. The Lord himself is going to open those closed gates to Cyrus. Think about that. Verse 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. Now, from what I understand, this was written before Cyrus came to power. I don't know. It's Just remember, history is written by the Antichrist now except for the Bible. Well, they're even changing the Bible now. The Bible printers are making changes, even to the King James Bible. It's, that's why I tell you people, go, get, go to the used bookstore, go to Amazon, get used old Bibles. The older, the better. Verse 4, For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. Yes, the Lord changed Jacob's name to Israel. Verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. Listen to this carefully. I did a Bible study on this. I form the light and create darkness. So this is Isaiah 45 and verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. Well, what's darkness? It's just the absence of light. I make peace and create evil. Ah. What is evil? The absence of good, right? Did God create the archangel that became Satan and the devil? Some say Lucifer. Yes, he did. And when he created him, 
He created him good. But he rebelled and became evil. And if you are interested in doing an in-depth study of that, I've got I got a study on that too. Uh, according to YouTube, I've got over a thousand uh, Bible studies up on my channel. So I cover a lot of topics. So if you're interested in a topic, write me, let me know. I'll try to find it. So when it says that the Lord, I make peace and create evil, well, originally, Satan and the devil was created good, but he fell. So technically, God did create evil, but he didn't start off that way. So, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, just remember in Genesis, where on the sixth day, the Lord looked at all his creation and he said, Behold, everything was good. So, I don't believe until you get to Genesis, uh, what is it? Genesis 3 is when Satan decided to rebel. Verse 8, Drop down ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the pot shards strive with the pot shards of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou, or thy work? Hath he no hands? You know, a piece of clay is not going to be arguing with the potter that made the clay, in other words. And we are the clay. Verse 10. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou, or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me. I have made the earth, and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city, and he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. And I think these are the captives in hell, and that's what Christ did. He went to hell for three days and preached unto the captives in prison. And if you're interested, I've got a Bible study on that. I mean, you know, Christ told them everybody that he was going to go for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth well what was he doing for three days and three nights in the heart of the earth after he was killed he was preaching to the old testament saints that were in abraham's bosom if you don't know what i'm talking about you might be interested in doing a study verse 14 thus saith the lord the labor of egypt and merchandise of ethiopia and of the sabaeans Men of stature shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed, and also confounded, all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. For thus saith the Lord, that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret, in a dark place of the earth. I said not under the seed of Jacob, Seek me in vain. 
I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations, that have no knowledge, that set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? There is no God beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and ye, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself. Can you imagine? God says, I swear to God. Yeah, God says, I swear to God. I mean, you can't swear to any higher, right? I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Keep that in mind, that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord, Have I righteousness and strength, even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Glory in the Lord, people. There you go. Paul writes in Philippians 2.10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And, you know, in Matthew 27, verse 29, when they were, uh, the soldiers were mocking Jesus, we read, And when they had platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Little do they know that in Romans 14.11, which is a direct quote of Isaiah 45.23, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. All right, that's the end. All Blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.